Yeah, welcome to my video blog, Questions of Doubt in Corporate Valuation. My name is Bernhard Schwetzler, and our today's question of doubt is, is there anything special about negative free cash flows? Today, we will talk about this in the simple version, and in the next section, uh, I will dive a bit deeper into this topic, and I will deliver an advanced version uh, on the same topic. Okay, so let's start by just looking at the potential reasons for negative free cash flows. The first reason is that uh, the firm is profitable and has positive earnings figures, but in some years has extremely high capex and net investments that turn a positive notepad into a negative free cash flow. Yeah? So you see here, this is an example. So in 2015 and 2016, this firm has about 38 or 34 million positive notepad. And then we have two huge investments, as you can see here, 100 million and 200 million in the two years. And that turned this positive notepad into a negative free cash flow. You see also that here our capex exceeds the, the old depreciation on the old assets by far. And we can also see that our depreciations are increasing later on due to this uh, huge additional assets that are bought. Yeah? So, um, yes, this may be a case, for instance, in an industry where uh, investments are made in that sense in single years, um, especially by renewing a plant uh, or something like this. Uh, then this might happen here that in a single year you may have a negative free cash flow. The second reason is for negative free cash flows is that the notepads are already negative. So the firm is not yet profitable and there is no compensation or no compensating effect by the net investments turning the negative notepad into a positive free cash flow again. That's what we see here. So this firm in the two years 2015 and 2016 already has negative notepads and these negative notepads, uh, notepads uh, are persistent because the net investments um, do not change the sign of this notepad. Yeah? So that might, for instance, be the case if the firm has a turnaround situation or you have to value a firm in a turnaround situation where you have negative notepads and negative earnings and due to the measures that you try to implement, hopefully the firm will earn money and will have positive notepads and positive free cash flows again in the future. So sometimes uh, the reason one and the reason two may be combined. That is, uh, you have negative earnings and you have huge uh, net investments uh, and that combined, of course, make even more negative free cash flows uh, in the startup valuations. Yeah? So the question is now, is there anything special or is there any problem that is uh, coming up when we have to deal with this negative free cash flows? And the answer is, the simple answer to this is probably there is not too big a problem yet. Yeah? Why? The reason for this is that uh, if we value a firm, then of course we always assume that uh, the firm is following the optimal strategy. Uh, and that means that uh, the firm is valued based on the assumption that the value maximization or the value maximizing strategy is assumed. Yeah? For instance, here a turnaround strategy or a growth strategy with high capex. Yeah? And that means that all measures and all investments that are based or, or part of this optimal strategy should carry a positive net present value. Yeah? Or what is the same, they should at least earn their cost of capital. Yeah? So in that, under these conditions, um, a negative sign of the free cash flow simply means that the money is not flowing from the firm into the pockets of the investors, but the other way around. Now, uh, the investors, debt plus equity investors, open their pocket and bring fresh money and put it into the firm. Yeah? So if the firm has enough cash reserves, then obviously there is even no need that uh, outside money uh, is brought into the firm because then simply the negative free cash flow may be directly netted against the excess cash. Yeah? On the other hand, if the firm does not have enough cash reserves, uh, then the investors have to open their pockets uh, and bring fresh money to the table and uh, provide fresh money to the firm. 
as additional debt or additional equity. The question now is, will they do so? Yes. If this assumption from above holds that the money is needed for positive value increasing, uh, net, positive net present value and value increasing investments or measures. Yeah? And that already answers the question because everybody is happy to participate in a positive net present value investment. And so there should be no reason, at least not on a perfect capital market, why investors should be reluctant to bring this money to the table and to bring this money into the firm. Yeah? So in a nutshell, uh, and uh, in the simple version of this discussion, there does not seem to be a too big a problem stemming from a negative free cash flow as long, and that's the assumption, as long as the firm is valued under the optimal, that is value maximizing strategy. There's a final note on this. If we discount the negative free cash flow with the same risk adjusted discount rate, for instance, the WAC as the positive ones, then of course this implies that the negative free cash flows are also risky and we discount expected values of these negative free cash flows. So finally here is a recommendation for um, some other videos dealing with that problems. Um, Aswata Modaran has produced a few. Um, some have uh, almost identical titles. So the topic is always the dark side evaluation. And it always is uh, the question, how shall we value and calculate values of young startup companies that have negative earnings and negative free cash flows? Yeah? So here's one link. And as I said, it's always a good idea to watch these introductory videos and valuing young companies. That's it for today. Thank you.